Good morning, Packers fans. Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat, coming to you live on the Cheesehead TV social channels. It's Thursday morning, and dear Lord in heaven, I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, please let Elton Jenkins be all right. That's right. Elton Jenkins missing practice yesterday with an ankle injury. Matt LaFleur indicating they're going to give him the week, quote unquote, see if he's ready for Sunday night. Guys, I don't feel great about this game as it is, but without Elton Jenkins, I mean, never tell me the odds and all that, but they're not great. That's all I'm going to say about that. Hope you're all doing well. Good to see everybody in the comments section. I'm Guys, I'm kind of dragging today. You know, I did that thing last night where I went to bed, quote unquote, early because, I, you know, I'm just trying to be responsible for a change. I'm going to get to bed early. But then my body was like, yo, it's 2.30 a.m. Time to wake up because that's usually the amount of sleep you usually get. So then I was just up from like 2.30 until 4.30 or so, just after 4. So I'm all messed up. So I apologize. I'm probably not going to make a whole lot of sense this morning. But it's good to see everybody in the comments section already chopping it up about the green and gold. Ellen Jenkins, Samuel, yeah, you're right. Ellen Jenkins missing equals free Joey Bosa runner on Aaron Rodgers. I don't know about free, but... A lot less resistance. Let's put it that way. Mm. Allergies. No, no, not allergies. Thank, thank goodness. Good day from London. Good day from New York, sir. I hope you are well. Thank you for joining us here today. Um, -ba -ba -ba. Jobu or live chickens, how can we shake the bad mojo for Green Bay and the brew crew? Yeah, well, you know, got to wake up the bats for the Brewers. That's no doubt about it. Uh, as far as the Packers, if they're one and one, they're coming off a victory. You would never know it from looking online this week. But, you know, that's a bad joke. I mean, injuries happen, you know, as far as Elton goes. Yes, it's a bad break, but that's football, you know. Everybody gets hurt eventually. It's not like the 49ers aren't dealing with their own injuries. Um, what happened to Jenkins? He hurt his ankle in the game against the Lions, and he was not at practice yesterday. Feed AJ Dillon this week. Run him right at them. Right, run him right at Bosa. Evan, I said pretty much similar uh, sentiment last night on Packer transplants. If you guys haven't checked that out, be sure you do so right here on the YouTube channel. But yes, run at pass rushers. That is the adage, the old adage, and I is one I very much agree with. Um, I understand it's going to be frustrating. I understand there's going to be plenty of plays where you don't gain tons of yardage, etc. Run the ball. Let AJ Dillon be your hammer. I could not agree more. Uh, <laughs> next, what would be the plan if Jenkins can't go? Prayer? Well, Matt indicated that, you know, we've been around the team. We can probably suss out what their, their strategy or plan would be. I know they moved Turner over last year on a couple of occasions. Maybe Kelly plays over there, you know, or maybe they move Turner and put Kelly at right tackle. Maybe Josh Nyman gets the call. I doubt that happens, but it's a possibility. Not, none of those none of those possibilities are very encouraging. That's all I'll say about that. But those are their op those are their most likely options that they're going to be looking at. And uh, as Yoda might say, engender confidence. They do not. Jeezy baby, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. I like seeing screens to Bobby. Maybe some screens to Jones to Bosa's side. Invite the rush up. Yep. Uh, get that screen game going. I mean. It's, not, it's a lot easier said than done because Fred Warner is there, one of the best in the business at the inside backer spot. And you got to think if he sees a screen developing, he's got great recognition and the athletic ability to suss it out and get over there and wipe it out before it begins. But I don't hate the idea of uh, running a few more screens. I did like the tight end screen, the throwbacks to the tight end against the Lions. Interesting that Matt pretty much took that seemingly right from uh, week one and the way the Saints did it to them. Do I get a discount at the Cheesehead TV store? I get more than a discount, sir. I get the stuff delivered to my home. Uh, worried about Fred Warner blowing up the game plan, Aaron Jones. He's been great at it in the past. Uh, yes, he is a major issue. I talked about this on Transplants last night. Uh, his sideline to sideline ability, not only, um, you know, as athletically gifted as he is, he is super football smart. And there's very little you can do design or game plan wise to get him to take false steps. I do wonder if they utilize a lot more motion in that, in this game for that reason. Um, we haven't seen a ton of the jet motion stuff that they like to do early last year. 
so far this season. Maybe they've been waiting for this game in particular. I doubt it, but you never know. Um, but they got to do something to try and get him headed in the wrong direction or second guessing himself, even if just for a nanosecond, just to give themselves a chance. Because goodness knows, if you're running kind of straight up stuff, he's way too good, way too smart, and he will basically erase it. He is he is definitely a problem. Craig, thanks for the super chat. At this point, can we start calling him Joe Barry Barely Blitzes? <laughs> That's pretty good. I like it. Um, I just get used to it, guys. That's just part of the scheme. Uh, Uncultured Barbarian, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. I'm all for running the ball, but we all know that Rogers likes to call his own number a lot. Love the Cheesehead TV watch party with Tyler. Pappies. Thank you, sir. And yes, I agree. Um, but it's not just Aaron. Everyone likes to put it on Aaron. It's not just Aaron. It's Matt as well. The two work in tandem. And many times that Aaron is making changes at the line of scrimmage or making a call, it's within the confines of the game plan that they've worked on all week. That's in concert with Lafleur, with the Hackett, with Getzy. You know, he's not out there doing it willy nilly. So I, I totally get what you're saying. You are correct. He does, you know, like to get it up and spread it out and throw it around the yard. But that's, you know, after all week, <laughs> a week of kind of getting ready for that. Accidental Hero, what's up, man? Thanks for the Super Chat. My first full Cheesehead TV season. Love this. Thanks. Kettle One at the Kettle Fund. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, very much appreciated. I'm glad you're here with us uh, at Cheesehead TV for the ride of the 2021 season. Uh, Philip, thanks for the Super Chat. He'll look good returning the ball. I agree. Sorry, guys. I got a bit of a cough going on here. Um, yes, very much agree. Uh, he looked like, you know, you want your returner to look as far as being confident and putting his foot in the ground. Now it helps. He had some blocking to work with. I know they got that ticky tack holding call on that one return, but yes, I think very promising, but I think the, the blocking was promising as well. You know, one of the big problems last year was, you know, returner would get the ball in the end zone and maybe have the ability, the, the possibility of returning it, but more often than not blocking didn't hold up. And I think it held up pretty darn well for the most part on monday night so hopefully that continues but i agree hill hill has looked uh, confident back there if i had to put money on it would i say elton plays the re or rest this week i would put money on rest my shirt vince lombardi yeah my shirt is the uh, old school this is a uh shirt i got from luke rogers aaron's brother when he used to own uh, a merch company god family green bay packers vince lombardi writing on the wall old school i love this shirt and no they're they don't make them anymore uh gbp daily what's up man thanks for the super chat rogers talked about 15 word long play calls on the mcafee show would you struggle relaying a 15 order to the offense lol there's a great old nfl films clip of rogers in the huddle with like driver and jennings and i think finley back in the day and he's trying to spit out this really long play call that's obviously under in Mike McCarthy's offense and he at the end of it he goes is that long enough for you um yeah there's a lot going on and that's why as he indicated in that interview you know that's why they have the 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 wristband so he can just say 22 instead of saying all that um now there's still adjustments that have to be made usually off of those calls but yeah would I have to do it in the heat of the battle I remember playing quarterback you know as a very young man uh and just you know, having to uh, really kind of focus your mind just to get the simple play calls that we had out into the huddle. I can't imagine an NFL offense repeatedly down after down having to do that. That's a, that's a lot of work. No question about it. Uh, what a week it's been. Who's going to the Ryder Cup? Not me, but I know it's in Wisconsin. I saw them all come out with uh, cheese heads on. The fake running back right and pitch to the left on third down was a momentum swinger before the real momentum swinger, 50-yard dime to Adams. Yeah, it was a, a nice creative call, I thought. Um, nice wrinkle. A few more of those. They've used that before, and uh, I thought they used it in a good spot there. Thoughts on Jace being released? I think it was just time, right? I think they kept him around because there was no need or reason to cut him before he had served his suspension. And since, apparently, you know, Daphne's playing well and, they must feel pretty good about where Josiah's at. So there's no real reason to keep an extra tight end around who's not going to contribute on special teams. You would have to cut someone to put him on the 53. Just wasn't able to stay on the field, and it's really unfortunate. I really thought he was going to be 
an exciting piece for the offense when he was drafted. And obviously that never materialized. I do wonder what might have been had he not taken that cheap shot in the Texans joint practice, which really set him back that year. Um, and then the concussion, um, he had a couple other things. He got sick, he had COVID protocols, et cetera. So, you know, he was just never on the field to really be able to develop. And eventually the Packers were just done. It's too bad. I hope he, I know I saw he caught on with uh, Seattle's practice squad and I hope, Hope he eventually finds his way onto the field for them and, and balls out. Dangler for a QB. Nobody wants that big B. Nobody. Rodgers hates criticism or someone who pushes back. I think Rodgers is fine with criticism as long as it's grounded in reality and or, you know, fairness. Um, I thought his stance last night or yesterday on McAfee or what, Tuesday on McAfee was spot on in regards to a national narrative being formed around an interview done by Jermichael Finley, who hasn't been around Aaron Rodgers in like a decade, talking about his mental state and if he's in it or not and all that. I think Rodgers has every right and should use his platform on the McAfee show to push back on that bullshit because that's what it is. It is bullshit. I mean, I'm totally fine. If you want to talk about Aaron's play on the field and his tendencies there and what he likes and doesn't like and blah, 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 football, right? Especially if you're a formal NFL player, that's you should be talking about that. Yeah, you played in the league. You see what's on the tape. You know you can talk about that. You've got a bit of an authority there. When it comes to his desire or his work habits or whatever else may be happening in the offseason away from the facility, you don't know jack shit. And to Aaron's point, but because Michael Finley played with the Packers, you know people run to him because they know he'll bitch about Aaron and it'll make a headline and it'll become a national narrative. And it's tiring. It's just so it's so obvious. Like Aaron has said in the past, and he said again Tuesday, it's the same people. And you even seen now Greg Jennings has kind of fallen off on that on that train. Like they don't get quotes from Greg anymore. It's just your Michael now. And it's so boring. And it's so over. And it's so transparent. So yeah, I think Aaron's okay with criticism if it's again rooted in fairness and you know what the tape shows. You start talking about his headspace and stuff like that. What the fuck are you doing? Fred, thanks for the super chat. Why is it so hard to plant your foot in the ground and go north and south on north and south on punts? Thought we would see more of eight on that side. I, Fred, I've said, you know, I talked about this earlier in the week. I think we will. He'll get there. Um, it's a bit of an adjustment going from the college level to the pros. Don't forget, Jair Alexander returned punts in college, and then he came to the pros and did it like three times and fumbled twice. You know, it's 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 a different animal. They're they're, they're much more athletic much faster. They're coming after you. Um, the punts are usually longer, higher, etc. So yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. I, I get your frustration. I'm right there with you way too much. That one in particular where he's running to his left, completely horizontally, young man, get North and South. Um, he'll get there. I have zero doubt. Craig, thanks for the super chat. What is a scarier horror movie? The Friday, the 13th series or the Packers third draft pick since 2011. Everybody misses, man. I got no problem with misses in the draft. It happens. It literally happens to every team. Jeezy Baby, what's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. Two weeks down, does it seem like Rodgers has gone away from his fundamentals? Seems weird seeing him overthrow MVS. No more so than usual, I don't think. I mean, sometimes he'll get away from his fundamentals, and yeah, they'll have some errant throws, but then you'll also see him get away from his fundamentals and make that amazing across-the-body throw to Adams for a first down to keep a drive alive. You know, it's like at some point you're out there and you're just playing. And actually that was legitimately no joke. The question I was going to ask Aaron about yesterday, but then he had to go. They could, didn't take any questions from zoom, but I wanted to ask about that because he had mentioned throwing off his back foot to MVS in the end zone. And that went into the ground. He wanted that one back, but there are plenty of instances where he does kind of get away from his fundamentals and still has amazing ability to put the ball wherever he wants. So is he getting away from it? Maybe sometimes, but you know, he looked fundamentally sound as hell on that laser to Tunyon. He threw in rhythm, as he said, you know, if he's playing in rhythm, I'm fine with however he wants to throw it. If he's playing in the rhythm of the offense. Now it helps if you are kind of within your fundamentals, right? But you heard Peyton talk about it on the Manning cast, you know, Peyton always had to have his foot lined up, weight evenly distributed, pushing into his throw, classical. Uh, Aaron can be falling away, back foot, shoulder <laughs> all the way back, no ability to kind of distribute your weight forward and just sling it and still complete it. So when you've got that ability, 
every once in a while you're going to fall into it, right? And, you know, I, don't, I can't begrudge the man for that. I will say, the more he does play within the structure of the offense, the more he does use, utilize his fundamentals, the better he's going to be. That's point blank, especially as an older quarterback. No doubt about that. Big Daddy Cool Breeze! What's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. There's some money for the jukebox at Kettle of Fish. Are you going to play Accidentally in Love or That Thing You Do for Big Daddy Cool Breeze? You know? I love That Thing You Do. What a great movie and song. I mean, Accidentally in Love, that's a, a classic track. Good stuff. Good stuff right there. Thanks for the uh, jukebox money. Too old for this. What's up, man? Thanks for the super chat. What's worse, thinking the Packers suck or thinking the Bears are now Super Bowl contenders with fields starting? Oh, ooh, ooh, baby Bears fans are all up in it, right? God bless them. They're adorable. You know, let them find out the hard way. It's fine. <laughs> Somebody watched uh, Transplants last night. Bitcoin at a bodega. Oh my God, Banky with the great one-liners. I have a lot of trouble with Rodgers. I love the Packers, but knowing he wants, well, what does it say? I know he wants out. I would just as soon see him leave now. Go Pack Go. No, but he gives them the best chance to win. If you love the Packers and you want them to win, you want Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. I mean, I'm very excited to watch what happens when Jordan Love takes over eventually, but let's slow down. Let's see if they can make a run to the Super Bowl first, you know? I hear you. I feel you. But the time will come. No need to usher him out the door. Q King, what's up, man? Nice to the super chat. It's been a while, but here's to the offense running the ball. <laughs> Amen. Amen to the choir in the church. Couldn't agree more. Running the ball. That's what it should be all about. Prediction. Jenkins sits all week and starts Sunday. It's possible. I'd be surprised, but it's certainly possible. No doubt about it. Cuddly bears. <laughs> Oh, uh, look like Dylan against the Lions. It was Jones. Sometimes it feels like one guy is meant for that. Uh, well, I think it should be run through Jones. That should, he should be the lead dog, always. Um, you know, they re-signed him for a reason. He's an amazing football player, and I love AJ. Uh, speaking of AJ, shameless plug, carry the G with AJ Dylan tonight on the YouTube channel at 8 p.m. Eastern. Join us. Um, and, yeah, I'm all for Utilizing AJ, especially in a game like this, like run at them, pound the rock. But, um, you know, Jones is is a very special player. And the offense flowing through him, being, you know, utilizing his talents as both a runner and a receiver just opens up everything. Like the defensive coordinator is so worried about how they're going to utilize Aaron on the next play. It opens up everything for everybody, including AJ Dillon. We saw a couple of plays where they were both in the backfield, and I think we'll see more of that, and I hope eventually we'll finally get A.J. out of the backfield in a wheel route, because God help the safety who sees him rumbling, bumbling, stumbling down the field up the sideline when he catches that. Look the fuck out. Uh, but, 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 what else we got? Packers by seven. Book it. A lot of buckets in the old chat today. You people. You can book it all you want. You know no one's going to hold you accountable for this stuff. It's all good. Aaron, thanks for the super chat. Is there anything to going away from your normal scheme when playing the person who semi-taught it to you? Uh, that's a good question, Aaron. Um, you know, Matt's been asked about that kind of thing before when he's gone up against McVay and Shanahan. Um, and now, you know, you've got uh, Barry in the mix who is familiar with the 49ers uh, from his time with the Rams. Yeah, I think... You always want to be who you are. You want to be true to who you are. And I think Matt's done a much better job so far in his tenure as the head coach of not strictly sticking with, oh, we're going to run our stuff and you just got to stop it. That's what McCarthy always did. And it was great when Aaron Rodgers was Aaron Rodgers, you know, Superman Aaron Rodgers version. But eventually people catch up to you and you got to, you do have to put some wrinkles in. I think Matt's done a good job of being more of a week to week game planner than Mike was towards the end. I don't think he's ever going to go away with it, no matter who he's facing, though. It's not a question of like, you know, oh, the master taught me this and I'm going to, you know, at some point you got to beat him with your scheme or not. And I don't think they're going to abandon the scheme just because the opponent might know it a little bit. You know, now the thing you might change is tendencies. That's where I think things will change up. You know, that's where you try and get them off, off kilter, so to speak. You know, but the actual plays and the scheme itself probably won't change much. Walter, thanks for the super chat. What's your confidence level moving 
on to Jordan if, God forbid, we can't keep Tay. A lot going on there. That's a lot of ifs, Walter. Um, Totally fine. That's the NFL. Can't pay everybody. And the scheme helps a young quarterback. No question about it. I mean, will it be easy? No, of course not. Would I like Devontae to stick around? A hundred percent. I like good football players. I like them on my favorite team. But if for whatever reason they have to move on and then they do move to Jordan, giddy up, man. Next man up. Scheme them open. Let's go. Or, God forbid, run the football a lot. And then work off play action and get your guys some opportunities that way. Ain't no thing, man. Dave, thanks for the super chat. Do the Packers need to adjust the usage in the run game? Seems like speed at middle linebacker is kind of a Jones kryptonite. Well, it is in the sense that they do, they've tried to utilize a lot of the zone spread stuff, right? Where the zone, outside zone, either way. Yeah, Fred's going to ignore, he's going to eliminate that. I would much rather run at them, either through the A gap or off tackle, but don't try to get so wide. Yeah, I don't find, like, I think Jones is a hell of a lot tougher than most people give him credit for. Like, people always say, like, oh, we're going to pound the rock. We got to use AJ Dillon. And I'm for that. Don't get me wrong. But Aaron can stand up to that stuff. He's a tough son of a gun. I have no problem. And plus, if you have Aaron Jones out there, they're probably thinking they're going to try and get outside. They're going to try and utilize his speed, try and get him around the edge, maybe use him in the passing game and the screen game, get him on the perimeter, what have you. I'm all for mixing that up and just running up the middle in the A gap, pound the football with Aaron Jones. He's tough. He can handle it. I'm all for it. All, all for it. All right, everybody. I'm going to have to get going. I can't thank you enough for hanging out and talking Packers each and every day, Monday through Friday, right here on the Cheesehead TV social channels. Please, tonight, join us. 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Lambo time. Carry the G with A.J. Dillon. The week two edition joins us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hot time in the old town tonight. Please hit like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. That way you always know what's going on. Get, get your alerts. Join us for all the live stuff. Um, then tell your friends and tell your family. Cheesehead TV, we are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go. Go.